Hi, guys. Welcome to Real Food Recovery. We have a very special guest here that I am super excited to share. But before I do, I want to say hello to my partner in crime, Jamie. How's it going, sister? Good. Very good. Glad to be here and glad to have Leah with us today. Um, Leah Hope, we are so thrilled to have you here. You know, in, in our in Real Food Recovery, we talk a lot about the process of recovery, the process of, of you know, living in recovery and um, feeling your way through it um, and all the tools and resources and our branches of recovery. But what we don't often do is, is really have a guest on our podcast who is not, who is an expert of living recovery. And that is what Leah is today. Leah is a true success story in action right? I don't think the success stories are ever over. I think they're just sort of a snapshot in time, right? Of, of one success to date. And that's what we're here to talk about with Leah. Um, that's certainly been my experience as well. And I think that it's a really interesting, compelling um, story. So let me just share a little bit about who Leah is. Leah is a dedicated advocate for health and wellness. She's a personal journey that is deeply intertwined uh, that focuses on consuming more whole and minimally processed foods. Um, Leah has transformed her experience into a mission to help others reclaim their health and vitality. Through her social media platforms, she offers a range of resources and support tailored to guide individuals on their path to overall health. Leah's approach is rooted in empathy, education, and empowerment, making her a trusted voice in the community of those seeking to break free from the grips of overeating and ultra-processed foods. Um, and G Leah is going to share her insights today and strategies uh, on her hope for a healthier future. And I don't know, guys, you will, you might know seeing Leah um, here today, but I don't know about you guys, if you recognize her as the person in her social media uh, ads, and you'll see her literally transform mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning of her journey to where she is today. And it is very cool. You know, every time I, I'm scrolling on Instagram and I, I see one of her one of her posts um, and I see the, her transformation in sort of photo, photographic journey, it is so cool to watch. I stop and watch it every time and marvel at um, at how not only how she's done it, but she's done it in a very public way. Um, and, you know, I could have I have, you know, pictures right captured here and there throughout my journey, but Leah has done it literally in video format, captured it from the beginning um, and, and then allowed people to sort of watch her transformation in action. And that takes a lot of courage. So Leah, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about who you are and your story? Hi, thank you so much for having me here. I also wanted to say something real quick, what you were talking about with like that you're never a complete success story. Like that's something that I love to share about. It's so hard for me to share those videos, actually, knowing that people are looking at that and thinking this is my before and after because I don't feel it. This is not my after. Like there's no such thing. Trust yeah, me. I thought I was there and then it yeah. a new chapter to work on. It's always a, a process. And so that's what I say. This is my during, like this is not... Yeah. And, and, and what a sad place to be, to, to think like, this is the end, like I'm done. Like, don't you want more? Don't you want more growth? Don't you want to keep working on? So it's just such an interesting thing. So it is, it's hard for me to share those videos sometimes knowing that people are looking at that as a before and after when that's not what I'm trying to put out there, but I also know those videos it is what's going to catch someone's eye. And then hopefully they'll take the time to like read my caption and hear more of my thoughts too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I am Leah. I am a photographer in Arizona. I have, as far as like my, my health journey in that part of my life, I have been overweight since I was a child, obese since uh, a teenager, um, it definitely, I, when I started this health journey in March of 2022, I was, I had a, an accountability friend and I would talk with her and she would say like, she would encourage me to examine, like, it, this is most likely an emotional eating thing. And I was like, no, I don't think so. Like, I think it just became a habit. Like, like I thought maybe one time it was emotional, like when I was a teenager and then it just became a habit, um, yeah. 
But then like, once I started paying attention and if there was a time where I was feeling upset or sad or hurt, and my first instinct was always to like, what food do I want to go get? Like, what do I want to go pick up right now? What do I want to go to the store to get? And I was like, oh, wow. Like it is an emotional thing. <laughs> and so um, it, it, the whole journey in general turned out to be much more of an emotional and mental journey than a physical journey, which is not what I was expecting. I was, I was expecting, like I was prepared, like this is going to be hard physically. This is going to be tough on me in that way, but I, I wasn't as prepared for the emotional and mental aspect of it all, but that has definitely been. In the, what way? In what way? Um, I didn't even think about an emotional aspect. So not just in the way of that I was realizing, oh, I do have an uh, emotional tie to overeating or to eating unhealthy foods or overly processed foods. Yes, that was connected to my emotions, but I didn't think it would be, I went through this very weird phase in my journey, maybe about eight months in where I was crying and so emotional for conflicting reasons. Like I was crying and frustrated because it wasn't happening fast enough. And then I was crying and frustrated because it was happening too fast. And I was like, my body is looking different. This is so weird. And it was just so bizarre to be feeling both of it being frustrated that it wasn't happening in the timeline that I wanted it to happen in, but also realizing my life is changing. My body is looking different. This is not the body that I have been living in. And the world around you is responding to you differently. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a whole nother thing. I mean, that was a while longer. That was probably close to like losing 200 pounds was when um, I started noticing being treated differently. And, mm -hmm. and that was just sad too. Like people would think, Oh, isn't that great? You're treated better. No. Like I just, I don't want to know that anyone treated me a certain way because of what I looked like. And now they're treating me better because I look like if you it's, wouldn't, wouldn't have looked at me then I don't want, I don't care to have you look at me now. Like I, so I feel sad for old me for a lot of reasons, um, but that's one of the reasons. So it was just a strange emotional journey of things I didn't expect to come up. Um, mentally, I knew that the mindset shifts had to be an important part of it. I knew that I had to think of this as a lifestyle change rather than a, a temporary diet, but I didn't think about how hard that actually was. Like I thought it was just like, yeah, you just decide and then that's it. But no, I had to tell myself every single day. And I say like, it probably took about a year for my new mindset to be my, my first thought instead of the thing that I convinced myself of for a say whole year. Again, say that sentence again. That's it, it took like a whole year for me to turn my new mindsets into being my first thought rather than something that I was just convincing myself that I needed to believe this. Um, Cause our first thought, it is not always a beneficial one. It's not always a good one, but it doesn't have to be where we live. We get to decide what our second thought is, what our next thought is. And that is where we can move forward. Yeah. So how did you do it? How did you do, you know, lose your, lose, I hate to talk about just the weight loss, right? But how did you transform who you were to who you are today? Uh, I, it all starts with the habits. Like you cannot change your life if you do not change your habits. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what it, I just started with very simple things. I, I told myself, I'm going to change I'm going to add one nutritious food a day, like literally one nutritious food. Cause there were some days I was having fast food three times a day. Like I went to Starbucks and then I went to in and out and then, or like fast food twice. And then just like a highly processed frozen meal or something. And so I was like, I eat one nutritious food a day. So I started incorporating eggs. That was like my thing. I was like, I'm going to have eggs every day. And then I'm going to move my body in some way every day. And so I started with just a 10 minute walk. Um, that was about as much as I could do in my, I was almost 400 pounds at the time. And that was, 
what I could do before I was feeling in pain. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's what I did. And I did it in my backyard because I was too embarrassed to walk in public at that size. And so, um, I made it work. I also, in my house, I would march in place. So Mm -hmm. I just found any way to add in more steps. Like if I I'm waiting for my coffee to brew for three minutes, I'm just marching in place right there. If I'm waiting for something to cook or waiting for something in the air fryer, instead of just sitting down, scrolling on my phone, I just marched in place and it, sometimes felt silly and it looked silly. And I just kept telling myself any movement is better than no movement. Cause we so often, we just, if, if anyone has like a perfectionist tendency, somehow we have convinced ourselves that if we can't do everything exactly how we planned, it's better to not do it at all, which is just not logical. Like that just doesn't make sense. Like, oh, if I can't do it all, I can't execute it perfectly, then I might as well do nothing. But it's like, how is a 10 minute walk good? Like that is obviously going to be better for you than not walking at all if you can't fit in your 30 minute walk or your 45 minute walk. And so that was one of the mindset shifts that I continuously told myself every day, like just just move, just do, just get started. Any movement is better than no movement. Any nutritious food is better than no food. Getting rid of that all or nothing mindset was key to continuing. I heard uh, in one of our Zoom calls with our members today, somebody said, uh, I know the saying is knowledge is power, but that's not true. Action is power. And so that just reminded me of what you just said, instead of scrolling on my phone, which is probably what I would have done, Mm -hmm. uh, march in place for three minutes. I mean, and the other thing that you said that was so huge is habits. I was listening to a podcast today and they said, that's, that's the one thing that changes your world is, is habits that that's what sets you up for success. So it sounds like you're saying you had new automatic default settings in your brain as you're rewiring these neural pathways to ha- do a, a new automatic habit that you hadn't done before. And we know that our brains are plastic. So that neuroplasticity allows us to, since it's malleable, allows us to change these um, automatic habits. Even if you have to stop and think for a minute, eh, I started to do this other And then I noticed you said, wait, I'm going to think two or three steps down the road. And we talk a lot in real food recovery about future self, staying in that future self. And we, we always say, think 10 steps down the road. Every, every move you make, think, think 10 steps down the road at night. When you get a little craving, think about how am I going to feel tomorrow morning? How do I want to wake up? But uh, I had a question for you when you were thinking, when you're talking about, um, You said you started your transformation in March of 22, and then you have all these beautiful uh, videos from uh, beginning to not end, beginning to where you are now. And um, I'm assuming your photography background probably helped, but I was thinking, how'd she know to start taking pictures then? Did you know that this is it, that I'm starting now? Like, was there this defining moment that said, I've got to take a picture today because starting today, this is it. Yeah. So there definitely was a, a define, like I had my first real rock bottom moment, which I will share, but, um, honestly, I still, I had, this was not the first time I had taken before pictures. So Uh I felt foolish. Like I felt it, I almost didn't even take as like my first video, my first real video that I took was like almost like a few weeks in and then probably a couple months later to the ones that have been some of my most popular videos. Um, So I didn't think there was a part of me that was like, that just felt like an idiot for taking videos and pictures. Like, why do I think this time is going to be different when I've tried so many times before? Um, Mm -hmm. But yes, my, as a photographer, um, I very much believe in documenting our lives and, and I did not document with the intention to ever share online. I never thought about that. It like, it was for me. It was for me to see the changes. Um, it wasn't until maybe I I think I wrote about it in my journal, maybe eight months in, I was like, I, I wrote about how I made an Instagram page and I made this Instagram page before I months before I even started posting on it. 
I just made the Instagram page actually to think about coaching others, not to think about sharing the transformation. Um, and, but then I ended up sharing it and it's been helpful to have all these videos and, and pictures. You're wildly successful. And I think that's what, I think that's what it is. I think not everyone has the pictures and videos that document their whole journey, but, um, it was important to me. And even I was someone who I never shied away from pictures, even close to 400 pounds. And a lot of people don't resonate with that, but I think that it's because I'm a photographer. So how can I say, Hey, invest in me as a photographer while I'm saying like, no, don't take a picture of me. No, I yeah. truly believe True. in the value of photos. I, I believe in that. And so I would still be in them even when I wasn't feeling great or feeling like I looked my best or knew that I was the biggest one in every single picture. I was like, this is my life. I'm not going to not be documented in my own life. And so I still did that. Um, but yes, yeah, so my rock bottom moment was, it was in March, 2022. I am an aunt. I have a net. Well, now I have two nephews, but at the time I just had one nephew and, um, becoming an aunt has been the greatest joy of my life. And he's my little best friend. I love him so much. And we, so I went with him and his parents, my sister, brother-in-law to Disneyland. And I was nervous. Like I knew I had never been to a, a theme park, an amusement park at the size I had been while being over 300 pounds, but not where I was at that level mm -hmm. at that time, not the I was very aware that I had the least endurance I had ever had in my life, but I did not want to miss out on this experience with my nephew because I want to be the best aunt I can be. So I went to Disneyland and within a few hours, my back was hurting. My feet were hurting. I was sweating profusely. I got a migraine um, just a few hours in. And so for a large portion of the day, I just sat by myself with my eyes closed so that I wouldn't throw up from my migraine while my sister and brother-in-law and nephew were out exploring the park. And on the drive home that night, I just, I, I felt foolish for thinking that I could handle it. And I was like, I should not have gone. That was not good. Obviously now I am very thankful that I went because it was a turning point. I just realized if I do not change anything about my life, like this is where mm -hmm. I'm heading. I'm heading this direction where I can't even enjoy a day at what is supposed to be the happiest place on earth. <laughs> it was the most miserable place for me. And I just said, this is not the life that I want to be living. And so if I want a different life, I have to start acting differently. Yeah, that's important right that you that you connected that um a lot of people have those experiences and never connect that yeah. they need to do something different they'll just resent that they have that experience instead of thinking mm -hmm. about how they can use it as as a change a change yeah. um that is awesome how did you so so essentially you know you started moving you started moving more intentionally yeah. you started incorporating single ingredient foods intentionally what else did you do so that was like my slow start. And that is what I encourage people to do, like start small because that's everyone puts off the diet until Monday or until the first of the year or till whenever, because we're thinking of it as this whole big thing. I have to change every single thing about my life on this day. But I just started the next day. I had eggs. And then the next day I was like, oh, I'm going to take a little walk or try this. I tried like chair yoga once because I didn't even, I had trouble getting up from the ground at that time. So I was like, I'll sit in a chair and try some chair yoga. Mm -hmm. um, so this was the first time that I didn't do a complete, like this is everything I'm starting on this day. Um, and I think that is what made a difference. But so I gradually added in more things. So then another thing I started doing was I started writing down everything I ate, not, mm -hmm. I wasn't tracking my calories. It was right, just right. food journal. So right. like in the beginning of my food journal, I had not completely changed, but it says potato chips yeah. and onion dip, yeah. Teddy grams dipped in frosting. Like it literally says that at the beginning yeah. and then eggs with like, it was yeah. like <laughs> some of these new things that I was trying to implement with the things that I already was having, but it was just a way for me to be more mindful. I also was writing down like symptoms. So I would write like headache or stomach really? ache. 
And so the I journals can, are like, powerful. They're powerful. Yes. I, 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 I'm sad that the apps, you know, are where they are because food journals, the old fashioned kind, just like you're talking yeah. about food and, and food and effect of food and mood journal, they're super effective and yeah. way less, um, I think tough on people, right. Who, who are judgmental on themselves. Yeah. It's just way easier. Yeah. That's, it's just, yeah, Cause it's just, you're literally just writing down what you're eating. You're not thinking about tracking or anything like that. So that was one of the next things I did. I did eventually about six weeks in, I started tracking and I have like, it is not for everyone. It does not work for everyone. For me, it was kind of, I've always been that, that person, like the the love school supply shopping person and like organize all the binders. And like, I just love to see everything that I've accomplished in one place and check off the, like, that's just who I am. And so it was kind of fun for me to be like, oh, I get to see it and add up the math and say, I was in a calorie deficit today. Like it right. made me feel a little more control, even though I've also learned that um, bodies are unpredictable and we are not in complete control of if the weight loss happens, how it happens, when it happens all the time, like it's going to go up and down, it's going to be different, but at least I could know that I was doing my part. So even if the weight loss wasn't happening, because in the past, if the weight loss wasn't happening, it was just so easy to say, what's the point? Like, right. why would I continue being miserable, eating this way that I don't like eating, moving my body this way that I don't like moving if I'm not getting the results that I wanted? So rather than being results focused this time, I was habit change focused. So I said, these are the habits that I want to have, like talking about future self. That's what I did. I thought about what does future me's life look like? And future me does take a walk every day and does enjoy having a healthy meal that makes me feel good. And so I have to st like, why am I waiting for that? Like, what? why do I think, am I waiting for that dream house or the dream spouse or the dream job to, to be that dream version of me. I don't have to wait for those things. Like I can start implementing the habits of the person that I want to be now. And so that's what I started doing. You said, you know, when things got frustrating, you said to yourself, why would I even eat this way or move this way if I don't even like it? But did that change for you? Did you learn to like that food, like the movement did it feel good to you there must have been a catalyst in there somewhere that yeah, yeah definitely I, I'm going to kind of rephrase that question because most people they they start on it I'm doing air quotes for those that can't see me start on a diet and they last two to three weeks at at tops mm -hmm. and um so, sometimes it just lasts two to three hours yeah <laughs> but you stayed on this what a couple of years to get your weight up yeah. How did you maintain that momentum and motivation, it, combining that with the fact that in the beginning, you may not have liked that food and you may not have liked that movement, but you stuck with it. Yeah. Even when, as you said, it was, you know, not yeah. always a, a, a straight line of yeah. weight loss. So yeah. what's the magic there to help people that feel hopeless, really? Yeah. Um, and that's really what it comes down to is saying the, the future version of me that I dream about lives this way. So I'm going to start implementing these habits now. And, and it was at the beginning, it was just very hard and it was not enjoyable a lot. Um, and I, would be sore after working out. I, I actually, the food, I expected that to be the hardest part and it wasn't. I was able to find a lot of foods that I really enjoyed eating. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was nice, but I did, I mostly cut out fast food at the beginning, but I still, I also didn't say like, you can't have fast food. It was just, you know, future version of me does not go to fast food every day. That's not, what I do. And so I just kept tuning into that as much as possible, even when it was hard. And even when the results were showing up, I continued to believe it, to tell myself like, this is not about changing my weight. This is about changing my life. 
And so that is what I continued to tune into. Cause you can change your weight. You can go on an extreme diet for any amount of time, change your weight quickly. And then you're typically thinking, okay, now I'm, then the diet ends. And then I get to go back to living similarly to how I was before in the body that I want. And so it was a tough thing for me to accept, to say, this is not a diet. This is a lifestyle change. There is no end date. And sometimes I would cry. And sometimes I was like, I, I just want to eat three donuts at one time again. Like, this is not fun. I remember even just walking in my backyard and I was like, I really want to go eat three donuts right now. But, but do I actually want to be that person and also future me, not only future me years down the road, but future me right after I'm done eating the donuts, how do I That's right. feel about that? And, and how, not only feel physically, if it makes you sick, but feel about myself. Like, is that actually, even though I maybe you think at the time, this is what I want. It's not always what's best for you. And, you know, sometimes Sometimes I think about future me and I'm like, yeah, future me is going to be okay with the fact that I just had a giant cookie. Like, mm -hmm. I feel good about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's like a balance there and accepting that uh, overall thinking about your future self, like when it comes to movement, if, if I'm tired and that's why I don't want to get started moving, future me is always going to be thankful that I chose to move. Mm -hmm. If I'm injured or sick, then I can say, you know what, future me is going to be thankful I rested. And so there's a bet, it doesn't always mean you're implementing as much discipline as possible and you're just being hard on yourself and pushing yourself. It means finding what works for you and your body that day or your mental state or your emotional state or whatever it is. And um, just learning to find that, that balance there. Go ahead, Jamie. I've, I've got some other follow up questions, but I don't want to be a what is your relationship with food like today? I feel like that it, I changed the way that I eat. Absolutely. Like it's just, um, I rarely go to fast food, but I have not completely cut it out. Mm -hmm. I probably had fast food maybe twice in the past few months. Mm -hmm. Um, I still focus on eating as much whole and minimally processed foods as possible, but they're foods that I enjoy and, and feel good about eating. I don't, I have always admitted this. I do not eat that many vegetables and it's something that I could do better at. I love fruit. I love, I have tons of fruit. I could do better at the, at the vegetables. Um, but I focus on like good organic grass fed proteins um as much as possible and it doesn't feel I did I don't think I ever thought this was possible but I don't feel like I'm missing out but also because I have not completely restricted so like yesterday I went out to eat with a friend um that is now when I will indulge sort of um so by that I just mean uh, like I, I sh we shared a dessert and we shared an appetizer. And so it, I have learned that for me, it's not that I have to cut these things out entirely, but I just can't be sitting alone in my room eating three Snickers bars. Like that's not good for me. But if I'm with community and I'm with friends, I'm going to enjoy dessert or enjoy this snack or these potato chips. Like it just feels safer to have those options when I'm with community and it's more enjoyable. Like food is meant to be enjoyed, but am I really enjoying it? Sitting in front of the TV, numbing out, eating it by myself in my, like, am I really enjoying That's right. it? That's right. Not really. <laughs> I enjoy it more when I'm with friends, community, family, we're talking about the food. We're like, Oh, what do you think about this? Or like talking about whatever it is. And so that has something that that's something that has been really helpful for me. Um, and I've just learned that if I allow myself to indulge occasionally, then I don't feel the impulse to overindulge. Mm. That's right. Yep. The, the whole idea of, of binging or just any kind of, of overeating of highly addictive foods 
comes from restriction. Yeah. And telling ourselves that we can't. Mm -hmm. And that will set us up every single time for it might it might not be tomorrow, it might not be next next week or month, but it'll happen. It'll yeah. happen. It might be a couple of years down the road, but it will happen. And then time. yeah, you have too much of it, not only because you've been restricting yourself, but also because you you're telling yourself, I'm never gonna have this again. Right. So I should have as much right. as I can right now because totally. like, I'm gonna go back to my restriction and it's gonna be totally. great again. <laughs> and that is that is where Paige and I came together when when we started the podcast and we we met in a recovery community. Um that we were I was in for about three years, Paige was in for a couple of years. And we both in, in that community learned, you know, was was well intended, right? The the messaging was well intended intended to protect and intended to guide. But what it did was it instilled a lot of fear and a lot of rules. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those that fear and those rules really just made for um, a very, for me, I can't speak for Paige, but for me, it was a very anxious existence. It was very militant, black and white. And it got to the point where I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to have uh, dinner out with friends. I didn't want to do anything. Be- not because I had real reasons, but because I didn't trust myself around the food, mm. which is a horrible place to live yeah. mentally and emotionally. And it made me very uh, um, frustrated and and um, a little bit irritable. And it was just no fun to be around, even if I did leave the house and I was worried about what I was eating. And 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 it's so interesting because, you know, life happens and, and now here I am a few years later uh, and I have a real reason to not eat certain foods and certain types of foods and and groups of foods for the time being Mm -hmm. and I have I've been given a very strict protocol for now and uh to resolve some health issues and it's so interesting because now I have all the reasons why I need to be uh very very careful and very mindful when I do eat out um and now it's it's less fearful and it's it's coming from a place of uh, conviction where I am convicted that I am not going, I'm going to make sure that I assert my needs with the server. I ask for what I want. I, I'm very vocal about the places that I will go and the places that I won't go. And, um, and if there's an opportunity that doesn't work out to, to eat at, to eat with friends, I just simply say, I'm sorry, I can't go. Or I, I've got, I've got something else at home and, and have fun. And that's it. It doesn't come from a place of fear. It comes from a place of confidence and I know that what I'm doing is best for my body but it, and to hear that you've gotten there right um and that you've gotten there from a place of calm uh and I would say it sounds like you've gotten from a that they're from a place of very good perspective and balance and that's huge huge I hope that continues for you I hope you don't lose that me too. Yeah. I get, I get a few comments every once in a while, people making sure to let me know like, Oh, maintenance phase is the hardest. Like, good luck there to you. No like, thing. why would you say that to someone? Like, why? There is no such thing as maintenance oh. phase. Take it from somebody who's been on your path yeah. ahead of you. There is no such thing as maintenance phase. Yeah. It is, it doesn't exist. And anyone who thinks there that there is a maintenance phase is somebody who would write that kind of message. Yeah, right. You guys talk talk about that a little bit more. What that means, because not everybody understands what you're. You might be. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Leah. Well, uh, from my perspective, I would just think of it as like this is part of me hopes that that this isn't something that I will always have to be mindful of. Um, but realistically, I've spent, I'm, I'm 35 years old. Uh, I just started this journey right when I turned 33. Um, that's a lot of my life. Maybe I, I started gaining weight around six, seven years old. Like that's a lot of my life that I spent living one way. And to think that now after two years of this, like, oh, I'm good to go. Like I, it's not something that I need to be mindful of anymore. I'm fixed or cured. Um, it's just not very realistic. Like I, I do think that it will always have to be something that I am conscious of and that I'm putting effort into. 
but the different, and that sounds exhausting and that sounds not fun, but the difference is now I'm living the life, um, that is reward. Like it's rewarding enough that it's worth that consistent yeah. effort. Cause when you're on yeah. the other side of it, you're, and you think I have to do this forever. You don't know that it's going to be worth it yet. Like you haven't experienced that reward. You haven't experienced the beauty of it. You haven't experienced getting stronger relationships and feeling more energy in your body and more endurance and feeling proud of yourself. Like, so of course it's going to look like that's not going to be worth it for the rest of my life. Like I'd rather stay in this addiction or stay in the struggle. This is comfortable. Mm -hmm. This is easy. Right. This is familiar. Um, and so it's hard because you have to keep going until you get to that point where you say, this will be worth it. Like this effort, this consistency, these habits will continue to be worth it for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's the whole idea of, you know, choosing your heart, yeah. being, being sick and, and obese or morbidly obese is extremely hard. Yeah. And so is living a healthy life mm -hmm. that supports your health and and your goals for life that's hard too yeah. so choose your heart it, it there's no there's no easy path the easy path of of not planning anything and you know flying by the seat of your pants around your health comes with a lot of heart yeah that's why it's hilarious that people are like oh i just you know i, I don't have that discipline you have discipline in other ways that that yeah. you know around your your lifestyle not serving you so yeah. <laughs> choose it yeah. And it's true. I used to think that, that I stayed in, in the body and the lifestyle that I was living because it was easier. And it wasn't until like, I had this, this moment, I don't know what it was sometime last year, I was taking a walk around a park and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so easy to walk around this park. Mm -hmm. And I realized my life wasn't easier before it was just less. I had less of everything. I had less time with friends and family. I had, I had less outings. I had less things I could do and less travel, less things I was capable of, less options, less freedom. But I thought that was easy. Right. Um, and so now my schedule is busier than it ever was because it's full of beautiful, good things. Like I'm meeting friends to play pickleball and I'm going to strength training and I'm, um, have more friendships now because now we can go on a hike together and, um, yep. I'm just, I'm living more. And it just made me realize, yeah, that was not easier. I just had so much less in my life. So it felt easier or I thought it was easier. And don't you think you were getting that you in your mind, getting fulfillment from food versus now you're getting mm -hmm. filament from connection, from movement, from activity, from being outside in nature. I mean, all these things fill up that that need for the dopamine in the brain. You know, I was thinking about you said that one day in the backyard, I just wanted three donuts. And so I always when we work with people, we ask them a lot if you're having that moment to stop and say, OK, what am I really needing right now? Because it, it's not really three donuts, but if you can stop and kind of comfort yourself and just with ge sheer gentle curiosity, not with judgment, but sheer compassion and just curious, what what is it that you are really needing that would fulfill you and not leave you with any regrets? So we do a lot of that yeah. work internally to, to take a look at that. And- yeah. I do you want to say anything about that? Cause I do have some other questions about some other stuff. Um, so I think for me, like if I were to think in that moment, uh, I think that in that moment, I think it was more about fear of giving up this life where I mm -hmm. could go get three donuts anytime I wanted. Like mm -hmm. it, at first it looked like less freedom and less choice. Right. Right. until I started experiencing more energy and endurance in my body and was like, oh, wait, there is so much more that I have been missing out on because I chose 
the three donuts or what and it's not like one time choosing that but it was sometimes I'd go and I'd get a dozen donuts and I'd eat three a day for like a few days in a row like that's just something I did and it felt like this is great that I can just do this and not care and not and not care how it affects me and not care what it's doing to my body like I thought that was nice to, that was fun to feel that way until I I felt the freedom of having true choice being yeah. able to do more with with my body yeah yeah. Uh, when you guys were talking earlier about uh, the restricting and then that leads to binges, when we uh, interviewed Chef AJ, she said something that I thought was so profound. And she said, just a restriction and being 100% good all the time is not possible for everybody. Right. It, it's just that's just the, the way it is. And so I appreciate that you're sharing that a couple of times. Um, in a few months, you may have fast food. I think that's how you said it. And one of the things that I liked when I'm working with people is I say, know thy triggers. So for me, I have one hard line and that's sugar. I know I can't have it at in any level because that would lead to, I, I mean, ugly things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I can't have that once in a while. And I'm okay with that because it's so dark for me where I go I don't want to have to go through withdrawal. I, I don't want to have to deal with the, the cravings because that's that's too painful for me. So and and actually, once I've been off sugar, I mean, yeah, I'll get a twinge every now and then, but it's so mild. I can easily yeah. work through it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about you saying that every once in a while you will have fast food or split a dessert or an appetizer or go out. So are you at a point now? you've obviously made a choice with that, that it doesn't affect you, that it doesn't roll into uh, days and weeks and months and years of getting back into that food. So maybe talk a little bit about how you can have that one-off meal occasionally. And then do you just get back on? Does it not affect you? Do not have side effects the next day? How does that work in your life? Yeah. Well, so one of the things that has been important to me is not, um, by not having strict guidelines for myself, uh, like I don't feel like I can get off track. Um, I, I, I have never said like, oh, I fell off the wagon or I fell off track, even if I went to fast food or had a thousand calorie meal or had a surplus of calories in a day. It never felt like, oh, this was falling off track. It That's felt it. like, Good you job. know, this is life. Like this is life. It's not going to be perfect every single day. And so uh, just switching that alone helps because if you think I've fallen off track or I've fallen off the wagon, yeah, black and white, it, and it gives you permission to say, oh, well, I'll just stay this way for the weekend, start again on Monday. But if I don't think of it as falling off track, then it's like, okay, what is, what is the next best healthiest choice I can make for my next meal? Yeah. Um, and truthfully, I would say most of the time it is premeditated. Like, it's not like I'm out to eat and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have that dessert, but I'm going to have it. Most of the time I think, yeah, I'm going to split a dessert with my nephew or I'm going to have French fries instead of the bun on my burger. Or as soon as I get my meal, I'm going to split it in half and take half of it to go it is premeditated. So it doesn't feel like, um, impulsive or like I'm out of control. There has been, it really was one time, and it was actually just a week and a half ago or so. Um, I went to fast food and that was an impulsive decision. And that was because I was feeling discouraged and because like, it wasn't because I thought, Oh, I can have this today. Like, that's okay. It was just, I knew that it was tied to an emotion. Um, I went and I got this meal that I used to get before I started this journey, like this big quesadilla, chips, rice, salsa, all the things. Um, and I ate it. By the time I finished the quesadilla, I had an upset stomach and I was like, this is not, and it's not that I haven't cut out cheese or, or gluten completely or anything like that, but it's just that 
um it's the grease of it like it was literally dripping like the whole thing was dripping when you're getting something like that at a fast food place um and so I didn't finish the rest of it and I gave it away I was like here you want these chips and this rice like I I don't want and and I had a healthy that was lunch and I chose a healthier meal for dinner and so and that was it and so I didn't dwell on it I didn't I wasn't upset with myself. I wasn't beating myself up about it. I just said, I made that choice and now I can make a better choice next time. And it's done. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's amazing because I, I think some people don't always have that ability to have the one and then just go straight back into. So it's it's a delicate area, right? It's a delicate balance. And that's where I go back to people just have to know their triggers, what they're able to manage. Yeah. Is that, do you think that's a, a good way to summarize that yeah, situation? Yeah, I think so. I do think that it is something you can learn to, or at least that has been my uh, experience because I was not that person before. Like I was definitely the person that was like, okay, the since I had this, this unhealthy meal, then I'm just not going to work out today either. And I'm going to start again on the first of the month. That, that was always my experience before. And so that was just one of the mindsets, mindset shifts that I needed to make so that this could feel sustainable for me. Um, but I do think like I worked with a nutritionist and so she talks about like, you're saying trigger foods and, um, they use the language of like safe foods and unsafe foods. And so that's what it like, if you know, like I, do not trust myself around this food, then that's something you have to be mindful of. For me, those foods are the foods that I enjoy in community. So like I don't buy bags of chips, but if I'm at a party, I'll grab a handful of chips. Like I'm with people, I feel safe. There's accountability, even if it's not openly accountable, like, hey, make sure I don't eat too many chips. Like there are people around. And, um, and so that's just something I've learned for myself that I am able to enjoy some of those foods that, feel unsafe to me when I'm alone and because they feel safer when I am with community. You mentioned community. At, we talk a lot in our community at Real Food Recovery with our online food addiction recovery program that people heal in community. Did you have support around you? Did you have yeah, so I did from the very beginning I had an accountability partner and it it just kind of happened. Um we both just ended up opening up to each other at the same time saying we wanted to work on our health. And uh, we talked pretty much every day for at least a year. And it was, it was both, it was encouraging each other. It was telling each other where we're struggling, um, getting encouragement, supporting someone like it, it not only helps to have support, but it helps to be the one supporting someone else too, and giving someone encouragement. Um, so that this was the first time that I went into wanting to lose weight and get healthier with accountability because I consciously chose to not get accountability before because I wanted to give up whenever I wanted to. Like I knew that accountability was what I needed and I wasn't ready to commit to that because I'm I don't have any problem breaking a promise to myself. <laughs> that is fine. But breaking a promise to someone else, disappointing someone else, that is a different story. And so I never asked for it before, but this time it has been crucial. I also attended a wellness retreat a few times and made so many friends there. Beautiful. The community has definitely been a huge aspect, even just opening up about my journey to people who are already my friends and have been in my life for a while. I never talked about my weight before. Like it was it was just understood. Like, we just don't talk about that. Like I never made jokes at my expense. I never complained about my weight ever once, literally never, never to family, to the people I was most comfortable with, never because I didn't want it to be uh, open. <laughs> I didn't, I also didn't want suggestions, suggestions from other people. I didn't want them to feel comfortable talking about it. So I just didn't talk about it. Um, but this time I went into it and I opened up with people and I chose to be vulnerable. And then for some wild reason, decided to be vulnerable with the world by sharing online. <laughs> and I would not have imagined that this was where it was all heading, but 
I am thankful for for all of it. Good job. Yeah. So, much. so where can people find you, Leah? They can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok at Leah Hope Health. Excellent. You have been a wonderful guest and we have loved hearing your story. Do you have one tidbit as we sign off here of a non-negotiable that you have that stands out that would help people the most in their journey to be successful? I don't know if I'd say there's like a non-negotiable because I really do feel like there's no like one size fits all to getting healthy. I think people need to experiment to find what works for them. But I think overall people, so I guess this would be it. You have to know why you're doing this. You have to know why. Strong and it, it can't be, I don't know, maybe this is harsh to say, but it can't just be because you want your body to look different. Like that's great. I'm not saying that can't be one of the reasons, mm -hmm. but I just have never known anyone that that's enough of a reason to change your daily habits and your daily life. Yeah. Um, so if that's one of the reasons that's fine, but, but there needs to be some emotional aspects, some bigger picture. And so that's why, that's why I always say like, I am not after a smaller body, like I'm chasing a bigger life. And that's what it's about. That's, and so people need to know why, why it's important to actually do this and, and stick to it and change your habits to change your life. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We've really enjoyed this discussion. And I know those that are listening will glean a lot from your wisdom too. So thank you for what you've done for yourself, but so much thanks for what you've done to share for other people to help change their life too. Thank you so, so much for having me. I really enjoyed this. I felt like I kept wanting to ask you guys questions and hear more, <laughs> but you probably, your audience probably hears a lot from <laughs> Well, next time we'll come back and you can interview us. Yeah. How about okay. that? <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> Thanks you guys for tuning in. And if you want to know more about us, you can find us at realfoodrecoveryforyou.com. That's the number four and the letter U. And we will see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Thanks all. Bye.